As for our brothers, the whole house of Israel, who are in distress or captivity, on sea or land, may the all-present have compassion on them, and leave them from distress to relief, from darkness to light, and from subjugation to redemption. Now, swiftly and soon, and let us say Amen. This is the text of the Achena prayer that is being recited in shuls across the country as we pray for the speedy redemption of those being held captive in Gaza. I would like to highlight three unique aspects of the Achenu prayer, each of which connect us deeply to the plight of our brothers and sisters being held in captivity. First, we must ask why the prayer begins speaking about our brothers, the whole house of Israel. Early versions of the prayer only describe our brothers. Are the whole house of Israel, all of us, really in distress and captivity? Second, the language in Hebrew for on sea or land is Haomdim Bain Bayam Uvein Bayabasha, which literally translates to those who stand between the sea and between the land. In some earlier versions of the prayer, the words stand and between do not appear. What do we make of these additions? Finally, the prayer appears to be incongruent. It opens describing two modes of affliction, distress, tsara, and captivity, shivya. The prayer then continues to ask God, the all-present, to intervene. Addressing those in distress, asking God to, quote, lead them from distress, tsara, to relief, lirvacha, end quote. However, the prayer never directly circles back to those in shivya. Instead, it speaks of liberation from darkness, afela, to light, and subjugation, shiabud, to redemption. In my opinion, these components are meant to propel us deeper into the internal state of those being held hostage, in order to elicit a more emphatic supplication on their behalf. This agenda stands out in the opening words of Achenu. We declare that not just our brothers are in distress and captivity. It's all of us. It's the whole house of Israel. We have all been shaken to the core upon hearing the atrocities of October 7th. And we will pray, protest, and scream on the streets on behalf of the hostages until they are liberated. The next section, which discusses standing between the sea and between the land, is clearly reminiscent of Am Yisrael standing between the sea on one side and the land on the other as they were being chased by the Egyptians in the Passover story. I thank Rabbi Chai Posner for this wonderful insight. These Hebrew additions, which shift us into the experience at the Sea of Reeds, force us to realize that those being held hostage today are feeling the same way, trapped, without anywhere to go on either side, with an enemy breathing down their necks. It's a dreadful thought, but it's necessary to contemplate. As we sit at our, sab- set our tables this Pesach and speak of how the sea split from Israel, we must pray for a similar outcome for our dear brothers and sisters in Gaza, that they see light at the end of the figurative and literal tunnel. Finally, upon further reflection, the final part of the prayer may not be as incongruent as we originally originally thought. We mentioned Sarah in the first and last part of the prayer. Similarly, in the first part we mentioned Shivya. In the final part, we elaborate on forms of suffering related to this Shivya, to this captivity inner psychological darkness, and external physical subjugation. The darkness of captivity includes depression, dejection, panic, and any other inner dark experience one could imagine. We pray that God dispel this darkness and lead our hostages to light. We then speak of the physical state of those in captivity. Their bodies are being subjugated, perhaps cramped into a small space, without much to eat, lacking the comforts of their home and family, imagining even worse possible subjugations, just tears at the heartstrings. We conclude the Achenu with the plea that redemption and freedom come now, swiftly, and soon for the hostages. The Achenu reminds us that the deeper we go into the experience of those suffering, the more fervently we will pray for their speedy redemption. May the hostages be freed as our ancestors were in Egypt, and may we merit to celebrate with them swiftly and soon in our days. Amen.